Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to boost multiple things on your quest so that you can get the best experience possible. I've done multiple of these videos in the past. However, they were all separated and I don't think I have one that kind of goes through everything like this in one video to date. Also, we're getting the numbers this time. Yes, we're actually going to check out the FPS and I'm going to show you how much of a boost this can really give you. So without any further ado, I'm Mystical and in case you guys like this one, slap the red button down below and let's get right into it. Okay, so what we're doing today is we're doing multiple different things. First of all, I'm going to show you how to boost your resolution or not necessarily your resolution as what it's going to do is it's going to boost the texture size inside your quest. Now, this goes without saying, this will reduce your performance. That is until we apply the performance boost. Doing this on PC, it's going to be super, super simple. You don't need to have a VR ready PC to do this. Just grab any old PC or laptop and download SideQuest. Now head up to this cog in the top right of SideQuest and click on it. Make sure your quest has developer mode enabled. You do this by signing up for a developer account and then enabling it within your phone app. Connect your quest to your computer. Make sure it shows up in the top left of side quest. Scroll down to the bottom on this page and change your texture size. As you can see, you have a bunch of different texture sizes available. This actually works ever since the Oculus Go, so this isn't new whatsoever. And in fact, it's one of the best viewed videos on my channel back from when we did it on the Oculus Quest 1. And it makes a very, very big difference in games. However, as I mentioned earlier, it will reduce your performance if you bring it up too high, as you can actually bring it up higher than this with a command. So let's move on to that. While you can use the custom command option inside SideQuest to use this command, I'm going to show you how to do it on mobile in case some of you don't have a computer to do this on. You will need an Android phone, iPhones don't work unfortunately, as you will be using the ADB Android debugging bridge. So download Bug Jaeger. Launch Bug Jaeger, connect your Quest to your phone using either a Type-C to Type-C cable or a USB Type-C OTG adapter and paste in the custom command I will have for you down in the description below. In this command, you can modify this number to any texture size. You just need to find one that works for you. Now, you may need to lock and unlock the Quest for the changes to take effect, but once they take effect, they should be very, very noticeable. So with that done, you can also boost your GPU and CPU settings. The max here is setting four, and you can also do this on the same page through SideQuest. Connect your Quest to your computer, launch the same page on SideQuest, and set your GPU and CPU level to whichever level you want. Now, the exact same thing goes for the setting of the CPU and GPU level. You can do this from an Android phone as well. Just copy and paste the other command down in the description below and set the level to whatever you want it to be. That's it, it's that simple. Of course, the higher the CPU and GPU level, the better your quest will perform, but the more heat it will produce and the less battery life you will get. However, this works in both ways. So how do you possibly boost your battery life without connecting a secondary battery, which is of course something you can always do. In fact, you could daisy chain them all you like, even though that would get quite heavy after a while. This is very simple. Reduce your resolution size and reduce your CPU and GPU level. Of course, reducing the CPU and GPU level is not the best thing to do as, well, you're going to lose out on performance. However, reducing your texture size is a whole different story as you do not lose out on performance and you gain more battery life. In fact, you gain performance. And in some games like Beat Saber, where that texture size isn't all that important and you want all the frames per second you can get, this is perfect. Enough rambling on. Uh, let me show you guys the actual performance numbers that we get here. Of course, the first game that we are going to try is Modified Beat Saber, as this is the game I feel like will benefit from this the most. And then later on, we're going to try some more, well, intense games, like for example, Blade and Sorcery, where frame rates can sometimes drop. We're going to reduce the texture size and see the improvements that we get. So to view our frames per second, we are going to be using a software called Oculus Developer Hub. This software is provided directly by Oculus and you can use it once you have developer mode enabled on your quest. Not only will it allow you to do cool things like disabling the proximity sensor and enabling ADB over Wi-Fi, but it also has this really cool performance graph that we can use for exactly our needs. So without any further ado, let's jump 
right into it. So the first thing I did is I went ahead and forced 120 FPS. I did this using this ADB command and that changed the frame rate from 90 to 120. Now it is important to note that this will reset every time you restart the headset. So if you power off the headset and power it back on again, you will have to redo this. However, a load of you tell me you just put your quest to sleep. So you should be just fine. And as usual, in case you guys have any issues, do check out our Discord down below and hopefully we'll be able to help you out. So firing up our first game, Beat Saber and Oculus Developer Hub without any of the modifications done just to check out kind of our base frame rate. Firing up multiple songs here, I was actually quite surprised as Beat Saber ran at an almost smooth over 100 FPS constantly. Now, when you do launch songs with noodle extensions and other songs with a ton of mods on them, that's when things start getting interesting as we begin seeing those drops. With our base frame rate kind of out of the way and seeing that yes, as a matter of fact, the quest sometimes can't pull these songs at its 120, we went ahead and switched the texture size. Now, switching to texture size does exit out of the app and you do have to enter it again, but entering back into the game, we could see an instant difference. The game was running at 120 FPS and it barely had any drops. The drops that it had were mostly during loading times where, well, the frame rate isn't important anyway. A noticeable difference could be seen where the game jumps to that 120 FPS and pretty much sticks to it. And this is a huge massive competitive advantage in games like Beat Saber, where you want the most frame rate possible. Same thing could be said for games like Echo Arena, where that reaction time is necessary. Overall, this was a massive success. So we went ahead and moved on to Blade and Sorcery, where first of all, we reset the texture size to default so that we could get a baseline again. And no surprise here, the game hovered at around 80 to 90 FPS, which is really nice as the default frame rate of the quest is 90 anyway. Way. But bringing down the texture size, well, we got exactly what we were looking for, with the game hovering at around 115 to 120 FPS. Yes, it doesn't look pretty, but that FPS is there, and if you manage to find a compromise somewhere in between from the lowest texture size to the highest texture size, you can get a really, really nice gaming experience. I mean, this is a huge difference. 80 to 120 is a very big jump. And once again, I can see a lot of people using this that prefer having that smoothness over graphics fidelity. And I know a lot of people like that. Once again, a huge thing for a competitive advantage in case you're playing a co-op game. Now, just for the memes, for the lols, I decided to try VRChat. VRChat, of course, being known as one of the games that struggles on the quest. And while it did boost my frame, Rate right, and looked ugly as hell, it didn't boost it to something that I would call, wow, surprising, incredible, you know? It hovered at around 75, 80, sometimes 90 FPS, and while that is a boost over what I had previously, I don't think the graphics drop is worth it. I mean, some people have really nice avatars in VR chat, and you dropping that graphics fidelity is, is really not gonna let you see that beauty here. But it was a boost, and and I mean, for a device like the Quest that sometimes struggles with PC VR avatars and things like that, well, it can be nice, and it's good to know that that option is there. Now, it is important to note that I did have the GPU and CPU level on level 4 when hopping into VR chat and when hopping into Blade and Sorcery for both the baseline test and for the reduced texture size test. I'm gonna be real with you, I'm super happy with those numbers and I call this a massive success. So overall, I call our little experiment a very big success. While a lot of you may have already known about the existence of these settings, a ton of people keep joining the VR space and they like to see these updated videos with numbers and stats showing them truly how well this works. And I feel like this might just be the last video of this kind that we make unless a new method comes out as there really isn't much more to show. We've got the hard numbers on it now to prove that this truly does work. So in case you want to boost your performance on your quest or boost your resolution or, you know, your GPU and CPU level, I hope this video could help you out. I hope that you can get the most out of your device that you paid for, so you should be able to get the most out of it. And 
in tomorrow's video, hopefully I get to show you guys some pretty damn cool hidden settings that I doubt anybody knows about, as these are some pretty hardcore system level Android settings that it's a little bit difficult to get into, but there's some really interesting stuff in there. So as usual, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you'll have a fantastic day or night. In case you guys like this one, please leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please do let me know why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord down below and check out our Reddit, where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. Thank you so much to the Patreon supporting this channel. You guys helped me out a ton paying my bills, paying for my subscriptions, and overall helping me make these videos better. So thank you so much for that. And as usual, in case you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.